Hi, I'm Miranda from Weta, and today I'm going to take you through how to write your Weta after you capsize it. So this is me trying to capsize my boat. This was in about 10 to 15 knots in the Hauraki Gulf in Auckland. So you'll notice that I capsized with the Jenica up. So the first thing that I need to do is put the Jenica away. I reach under the boat. There's a cool shot here when I grab the line and pull it in. Obviously I can't see where the Jenica is at so I just pull blind until I'm sure it must be in by this point. Um, even, even if it doesn't get all the way in, that doesn't matter, um, but just do your best. It will make it a lot easier to pull up if it's in. So I cleat it there, you can see I was on the wrong side. And the next step is to take the hatch off. I can't take the hatch off when I was sitting on the float, so I jump off and get it undone. Our hatches have a little string on them that attaches the hatch to the float. Uh, the older boats don't come with this, so if your boat doesn't have it, you could consider putting it on. It just means there's one less thing to worry about if you capsize, which is not losing the hatch. So, as you can see, I sit on the float to sink it. There's a bit of a trick to this, which I didn't do very well this time, and that is to make sure that the uh, porthole is always half out of the water, so it's half water, half air. This means that the air can get out so the water can get in and it sinks a lot more quickly. And it's really important to make sure you get all the air out which will make the process a lot faster. So we've sped it up here because it's taking a little while. And you can see I'm quite far towards the front of the float but I could be sitting right on the tip at this point to uh, really get all the air out of the float. And if we have a look a bit later on it's a little bit slow through the process of getting it from here to halfway because there is still some air in the float. So here I am, I'm chilling out on the float, almost ready to get the centreboard. We're pretty lucky in New Zealand, it's nearly the middle of winter and it's still quite toasty, just in a wetsuit and my Ronstein jacket, a life jacket underneath. So I grab the tip of the centreboard, I'm about 70 kilos which is 150, 155 pounds I think and um, so it's all good if you're that heavy or a bit heavier if you're massive you might consider not hanging on to the tip of the centreboard but R Roger and Chris assure me that it's built for it so I'm hanging on to the centreboard getting the boat to come around uh, because there's that air in the float it's going a bit slowly through this period and I, while the boat is sort of on a three quarters around like that or one quarter I um, use that opportunity to jump onto the centreboard this is going to make it easier to get into the boat quickly later so I'm sitting on the board at about this point I noticed a couple of huge air bubbles come out and that was the last of the air coming out of the float so I stand up on the centreboard and you can see now why I flooded the leeward hull because I want the mast to be pointing into the wind so that the wind can get up under the sail and help pull the boat over. You can, it is possible to do it the other way but it's heaps harder. This way you're using the wind to help you. So I'm being a little bit tentative here. I could be standing right on the end of the centre board and I think I have a go at it later. But what I'm really focusing on is getting one foot up so that I can get into the boat quickly without having to fall in the water and then climb into the boat. So here we go, you can see the mast is starting to come out of the water and air is starting to get underneath the sail. And I am start to get it up, get one foot ready to go, here it comes and I just stick one foot into the cockpit and follow around. Here's the shot from on the boat. It happens quite slowly so it's not too bad and then you'll see the first thing I do is go for the tiller and we have an upright boat with one float full of water. So next step get all the water out of the float. The best 
angle to do this on is to steer on a normal upwind or close hauled angle. So I get the sails set up and get ready to go. This is off the east coast bays of Auckland. You can see we ended up being absolutely miles away from trying to pitch pole. And I think about putting my harness back on. It's pretty important to uh, wear your harness. The boats can be pretty slippery at the back there and if you're sailing by yourself you could fall off the boat and it will drift pretty quickly without you on it. So, but on the other hand make sure that you get used to using the quick release on the harness so that if you do capsize it's no dramas and you can just release yourself from the harness pretty easily. Although it is a really easy little thing. So you can see the water's coming out of the porthole there. I just moved to sit down on the port on the float so that it's really easy to put the cap on. Oh, not quite enough water out there. It does take a little while to come out, but we start to get along at a good clip here, so it's not a big deal. And all you gotta do from this point is just lean back and put it in. Really easy. So to sum up a couple of main points. Make sure you always flood the leeward float so that the mast is pointing into the wind when you get it up. Get all the air out of the float so once it's submerged sit on the front. And finally sail on a close all course to get the water out once you've got it, got it up. For more videos and information about the wetter check out wettermarine.com